Today is all about Alicia. I have no makeup. My jokes land. <laughs> no, it's not my fault. I look drastically different with and without makeup. Why did you stop talking to the last guy you were talking to? <gasps> he blocked me. You should DM Zane. Hey, do it. Winky face. Wait, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Please do it. The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Pretty basic. Fourth of July is right around the corner. I'm so excited because I actually, we have some fun plans this year. I'm in the midst of uh, getting the whole thing together, but I'm sure you guys will see on social media. We're gonna have a fun little party with all of our friends. Super, super excited. And I personally love Fourth of July because I love the food. There is not much more uh, in this world that I like more than a, a barbecue or a hamburger or a cheeseburger or a hot dog. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. Real bad. Real bad. I love a summer barbecue so much. The potato salad. Oh, the corn on the cob. I'm growing corn this year. <gasps> Maybe my corn will be grown just in time to grill yes. it up for the summertime. I might have to throw a little barbecue also pretty soon. I absolutely loved 4th of July growing up. I just remember it was it like the fireworks and, and you'd get the glasses. And like as a kid, we would always go to like the park or someone's like party. And it was just so funny. You'd swim all day. And honestly, it's just like very nostalgic. Another thing that's nostalgic is like one of the first viral recipes. Do you remember the when people would make the cake that looked like the flag? The watermelon The cake. watermelon. Oh, oh, yes. The cake pan with the, cake yes, with pan, the blueberries and the strawberries. Blue, yes, yep, yes. Yep. And you'd make the stripe. That is like such a core memory for me. Maybe I'll bring that to our party. <laughs> we love. Summer's biggest event is coming up this Thursday. Catch Macy's 4th of July fireworks live on NBC and streaming on Peacock or see it live on the Hudson River in New York and New Jersey. Don't miss spectacular performances and an inspiring salute to the American spirit that is sure to be one of summer's greatest hits. Tune in to NBC and Peacock July 4th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. I'm Remy Cruz. And I am Alicia Marie. I have to say... <laughs> Anytime I have my hair up like this, I'm looking at the, the monitor right now and it looks like I have short hair and I get the sudden urge. Chop? Chop it off. <gasps> but I know, I know I will regret it. Like I know, I know I, it's, here's the thing. I wouldn't regret it. Let me, let me backtrack. I wouldn't regret it. I would just be over it so soon because mm. it's taken me, I think four years to grow my hair out. Oh, from the bob, yeah. From the bob. I mean, get a wig. <laughs> and I could do that. Yeah, but get like, a wig. Because I don't have my contacts on right now, so I'm looking in the monitor. It may not even look like this on the YouTube video. Um, Go watch the YouTube video. Or get a wig and then get some extensions. Or no, get a bob and get some extensions. I know, but uh, it's so much cheaper to not have extensions. No, clip-ins. Oh, Just true. Clip I suck with clip-ins. I suck with clip-ins. Because then you can choose, you know, when do you want it long, when do you want it yeah, short. But it is cute. You're, you're very much giving cheerleader today. <gasps> You went with the high pony. Mm -hmm. I see you did the soft blowout. I did, yes. I gave myself a little Dyson air wrap today. It looks it really felt, good. Thank you, it falls so fast. If anybody has any tips on how to keep your Dyson blowout intact, please let me know. Do you do cool? Yeah, I do it all. Do you do the smaller barrel or the big one? Uh, I do the round brush. Oh, bitch, mm -hmm. you gotta do the, you gotta do the one the, 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 the spinny one? Yeah. You think that it'll stay longer? It, it stays so much really? longer. Okay. It is a okay, little, it is a little tight in the beginning. It's like curly. But when it falls, beautiful, okay. darling. I'll try that next time. I've been doing that. You I've been should. doing the, um, the thermal brush as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll keep playing around with it. Yeah. I'll see. How are you doing this fine day, Alicia Marie? Honestly, I'm doing really good. I feel like I am in a good rhythm, a good routine. Um, and I have to say, I am really excited for this episode. Yeah. I was prepped a little bit because people were like, Alicia, Remy got her engagement thing. You were an amazing host. You were an amazing they host. They want to see Remy as the amazing host. <gasps> Thanks so much for having me, Miss Remy. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. No, yes. Wait, let's pretend I'm a guest on Pretty Basic. Okay. okay. A lot of people have been asking for this episode slash also just to hear more from Alicia Marie. Which is so funny because, well, actually I do have a little bit of inside tea on this. Um, I feel like Rem and I, especially our friendship, like we go in waves where um, if one of us is overwhelmed and the other one's like, yo, what do you need from me? I'm fucking good. And I think God does this in the perfect way. When one of us is down, he makes sure the other one's up because <laughs> it's like, we need one of us to like 
Okay, like so okay i got the you know, like like give it to me like what do you need i can help you like whatever you pass need the baton. pass the torch over here um pass the baton and vice versa whoever you know is going through it and it, it's great it's great balance um except when we first met we were both down bad and i mm-hmm. think that was our foundation so it could only go up from there it's so true i feel like we're very much like uh the parenting style where you know people are very communicative you know i can only give 10 percent today i need you to give 90 i can give mm-hmm. 30 you give 70 i can give 95 you got to give five like mm-hmm. I think that's that's where we're at right now, which is, I mean, great. I think it's a wonderful parenting style. No, I think that's how we've thrived as not only business partners, but best friends, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> um, and what's funny is a few months ago, I was just like, it wasn't that I was having a lot of anxiety. I just felt like I, I remember coming to Rem being like, hey, I'm feeling really overwhelmed, specifically with certain aspects of the podcast, like, both of them actually I was like do you mind like carrying a little more weight for me like I would love you forever and you were like "Ah, bitch I got you don't (laughs) even worry (laughs) um and I was like thank you so much um you know whatever and then the next thing I know I'm getting people being like Alicia like we want to hear you talk more on the podcast and I'm like oh my god people probably think Rem can't shut up but here she is (laughs) I can't but (laughs) But she's being a good friend um and then luckily you know that time has passed she has passed and I didn't realize how long it's been until I looked back and I was like oh my god I guess like yeah like subconsciously like obviously I had that talk with you uh, and you were so willing to do that um honestly the fact that I forget what it even was perfect example that's good though perfect and that's example of my be. memory though no 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 <laughs> that means that it's like so far far in the past now like don't even remember don't even need to remember yeah who cares? don't even need to worry irrelevant irrelevant it also kind of worked perfectly because obviously there's a lot of stuff that i want to update people on it like timing wise people wanted to know about wedding stuff people wanted to know about all those things like it, it worked out perfectly mm-hmm. so i'm so glad no but thank you for doing that yeah. but i will say anytime <laughs> um other than cutting my hair i've been thinking about a lot of things lately and one of them was i was like you know what for a girl who has two podcasts um i feel like i'm always it's not that i run out of things to say it's more so that i have to be prompted with questions yes. to really bring up certain aspects of me or my life I've always been this way like I've especially like I grew up being the extreme shy girl in the corner like Mm -hmm. you couldn't I feel like there's most influencers are the ones who are like tap dancing in the front of the stage everyone is just (laughs) coming for the tap dancing today like like they they like like the spot a little bit I'm not saying you specifically I'm talking about I'm just kidding but I will be sending Hannah Burner my (laughs) tap dancing which you guys will hear in an upcoming episode but yes yes. um we did have her on and honestly it was one of my favorite episodes in a long time I Uh, love her I love her. her I feel like we're twins in a weird way yeah um and but then there's also the creators who are like super shy and it's like a little more reserved so it's like it's not that I don't it's not that I don't want to be the tap dancer in the middle of the circle it's more like I just I need to be asked questions even in friendships like how many times have you come to me and you're like how how are you like what do you need like what's new like tell me something because mm-hmm. you're not going to tell me unless I ask you to tell me yes that is like the epitome of me I know a lot of people are I think more people are like that than not but I feel like especially in the space and on the inter net Mm -hmm. I think it's more common for extroverted people to kind of like talk about stuff so it's so funny because I always feel like I'm such an open book but I also understand how I'm very reserved and like I have like I don't know I think you're an open book but you're not just going to willingly share things Mm -hmm. whereas like I will just tell you the most things that pe- when people comment like you couldn't waterboard that out of me I'm like wow <laughs> you're like should I reality shut check yeah for sure but <laughs> I'm like you will share things with people it's just you need to be prompted which honestly is the more respectful way to go about <laughs> things and I'm gonna I'm being so honest no also like on basically unfiltered I learned very quickly on like the guys are so funny and they can just banter all day like if, so quick. if we're not trying yeah if we don't like really try to get ourselves in that conversation, then we won't speak. And I learned that like early on. And I feel like we're just, we're, we're, we're trying to go with the flow right now. We're yeah, trying yeah. our best. Like there I'm like, oh, I can interrupt as much as I want. Cause that's the only way I can get a word yes, in. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So yeah, I've, I also feel like I'm so much better one-on-one in friendships, relationships. Like if, if it's a big party, I'm better having a one-on-one conversation than a huge like round table group discussion. I feel that. So it's interesting seeing the difference between how I am on this podcast versus basically, because basically I feel like I'm more of like a chimer inner. Like I'll just like say certain things to comments, but like, or if I start to say something and it's like a story and then I see all, like everyone's heads like turn towards me, I get this sudden wave of like, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Oh. So like, never mind. Forget I said anything. Like that's just like how I get. Um, and I've always been that way, even just like in friend groups and stuff. Um, but I we we've seen the comments. Some people wanted me, us to do the engagement game 
but Alicia. Yes. So not. Today is all about Alicia. I don't like that though. Well, too like- bad. You're going to give it to them. I'm, I'm like, okay. Today we're going to let Alicia Marie shine. <sighs> And we have some really good questions here to just kind of dive in deep. You know, we have some serious, we have some really fun ones. I'll turn on my host. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And I'm excited. These are really good questions that I think are really good to to check in with your best friend from time to time. But like we often forget and life gets kind of crazy. And I think this will be really, really fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me, Miss Remy Ashton. Thank you so much for coming on. You've been our most requested guest (gasps) ever stop quite possibly every episode they want you here no honestly like that is the biggest compliment ever and um i'm just happy to be here i'm glad that um our our people talk to each other yes so glad we could arrange Mm -hmm. to have you come on Mm -hmm. and um let us know if you need a refreshment i was wondering no one really offered me one um when i came in unlike other guests oh i filled the fridge with mogu mogu me having two drinks over here (laughs) i'm i'm very much kidding she also it's her fridge too so she's able to help herself (laughs) okay let's get to the questions all right we're gonna start hot and heavy what do you feel like is people's biggest misconception of you? Oh, take your time. See, it's funny because I'm like, I I can think of what I think is a misconception, but I don't know if this is actually like true. Speak, talk it out. Oh, this is going to ramble. That's okay. fine. I'm curious to hear your POV. Let me know what you think. This I'm is curious not my what, show, girl. I know, I know, this I know, is I know. about you. But no, no, no. But I'm like, to me, I think I could see a lot of people not knowing how like observant I am. Like, mm. I feel like it's like, I notice like when I walk into a room, I like, will notice everything almost to a fault where I'm like, so overthinking and overanalyzing. Like I will remember what people wore to certain things because like that stood out to me, but I'm like, I'm like literally analyze. It's not like photographic memory, but I'm like, I will remember where I was, what I was doing. Like, I'm just so observant. So TikTok would read me to Phil saying that like, I grew up in a, like my childhood form was like a people pleaser. I think a lot of people probably just don't understand how like deep I can be. Like, I feel like I'm very, observant like i'm i read into things a lot um i love deep conversations i know that anyone here on the podcast probably understands that but i think your average person who meets me or sees me online like would never think that i think that's a great answer (gasps) thank you (laughs) world peace (laughs) and april 29 world peace (laughs) every question oh my god yeah i think that was that's very true i would totally agree with that Mm -hmm. i think um You are one of, if not like the deepest person that I know. And I know you love stimulating conversations. I know that you are very observant, which ties into that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I agree. I think topically, just uh, at first glance, slash also the the stereotype of being an influencer, Mm -hmm. totally understand that. But I mean, any of my friends that uh, that you like have met you that are not in the realm, always think you're the most like down to earth, sweet, kind. Like my parents are obviously obsessed with you, but they're like, (laughs) I remember talking to my dad uh, in Korea and he was like, I, you know, I don't know her super well, but you know, if this is who she is. And I was like, it is. He was like, she's a very good girl, (laughs) which is like a really good parent compliment. (laughs) You're a good girl. Okay. (laughs) You've accomplished so much. What are your goals right now? Slash what's your next career wise? I have absolutely no idea. Like I have absolutely no idea, but I kind of love that. I feel like right now I'm really chilling and I'm so happy with how things are. And honestly, if you look back to any of like my last like quote career moves, like they all weren't really planned. Like even the new pod, the way that that came up was very spontaneous, but when it came to us, it felt right. So we were, we went forward with it. Same with this podcast. Like I feel like a lot of work things were less of a, like, this is my goal. I'm going to go do this. And more so being content or like just having my head down and grinding. And then when an opportunity comes up, I'm like, wow, I'm able to do that. I'm going to like pursue this For sure. versus, I mean, I did make a vision board, but do you know what I mean? Like it's less, um, this is what I'm planning next year. I have yeah. no idea what literally next month is. No, no timeline. I think there's something so beautiful in being able to just take a step back and, and appreciate all the hard work that you've put in, like all of these are now well-oiled machine. We're getting there with basically. We're getting this there. one's We're a well-oiled machine now. <laughs> Took a little while. I think that there's something so beautiful in taking a step back and appreciating it and, you know, being grateful for what you've built. One of my biggest things is like loving what I'm doing. Like I just love the creation and content creation versus I hate when, you know, you find people who are like, I want to be a musician, but they don't want to see in coffee shops. They only want to do like stadiums. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, you have to love the art and love what you do. And if I can do this the rest of my life, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, like it doesn't have to be, I don't know. 
I don't know. It, it could always change from what you think. Like think about when you and I met in 20. 20- 17 I'm sure you had back then I'm sure you had like very specific goals of what you wanted to happen and I feel like you wanted those things to happen so you could feel a certain contentness and I feel like you probably feel that if not even more right now and it has it's nothing like I'm sure what you had imagined oh my god one of my biggest goals ever in life I remember talking to my ex-manager about this all the time I wanted to do a Victoria's Secret pink collab like I was like, this is so on brand for me. Like back school, Isha vibes, dogs, like, like the, the dogs, the saturation. Uh-huh. Like every, I was like, I need to do this. Like this is iconic. Like it's never been done. It would be so good. It would fucking kill. And it's so funny because like now I'm not saying that's attainable, but like now it's so common for people to do like do collabs like that. Yeah. Like a capsule or something. Yes. And it's crazy. Cause it's like, that was my biggest dream at one point. And now I'm like, oh, like, I mean, that would be cool. But also I'd rather like just sit here and chit chat. Like and have a podcast. But that's amazing. You know what I mean? It's just cool. It's cool how like dreams can change. It changes always. I love that. What happened to Parallel? Speaking of careers. (gasps) Speaking of career. I feel like I talked about this, but I always forget what platform on when and maybe someone missed it and all this stuff. To be honest, I'm not going to say I got fucked over, but like in a way I kind of feel like I got fucked over. I mean, (laughs) can I mention the legal of it all? Oh, that was like my first lawsuit. Some legal drama and I won't say anything else. Remy's on my side. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was like my first lawsuit and I was so anxious. And and on top of it, it was only like it was I loved it for what it was, but considering it was all still self-funded, like Ashley and I were paying for everything and I lost so I'm not gonna say lose. Could I have had like um my MBA instead? Yes. Mm-hmm. I could have probably had my doctorate for the same price. Um I lost so much money that it just like and it, it's not even about the money because for the first few years I was like, no, no, like this is so good. Like um, I understand like I'm investing in this and I'm building something. But then once my mental health also went down from it and then you get into like the lawsuit kind of shit and all that kind of stuff and like the the politics of it all, like that's where I was like, I am not made for this. Like that was the first time in my life I was like, I girl pause too hard. This is not what I'm made for. It's not what I'm made for. And I literally was like, I, I, I hate this side of business. I miss being just a creator. Like dare I say talent? I hate saying that, but like, I like, I don't, I don't want that life. I hate it. I can't even deal with confrontation, let alone that all that is, is like scheming and like, how can you get the best deal and like negotiation? And like, I'm just not that type of person. And it's never ending. I remember once you started, they're like, we need to be doing drops this month or this month and this. And you're like, wait, 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 we just like never done. And then that's stressful. Another thing that was really hard is obviously when we started, Ashley and I wanted to do everything, um, you know, right. Like we were like, you know what? Yeah. Let's do it made in LA. Let's have all the models of every size modeling it online. Like, why aren't other people doing that? Let's do this. Let's do this. Like this is wrong in the fashion industry. Let's do this. So it's better. And then quickly we realized why most people don't do those things is because it costs so much money. Like even just having the samples available in every size is not normal for photo shoots, which I wasn't aware of until we were there and half the samples weren't there. We're like, well, we have to take a photo in it. And they're like, oh, well, most people just like make a digital version or most people like don't have photos of a model wearing every single thing. And we're like, cool. So we said online that we were always going to have, like, I think we set ourselves up for failure in that sense because we just didn't know the space. And obviously in a perfect world, I would love to see every single piece of clothing. And it's not like it's like, um, a hairbrush where there's one like skew of it. Like it's one thing we had every shirt in what every color, extra small to three X sizes. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, we need an extra small model, a small model, a medium model. Like we need every single model. That's so much money. Then we need every single clothes piece of those samples. And then God forbid a sample wasn't there on time. So many times we never had shit that we were supposed to have on time. So things would get pushed. So like it would be spring and we're coming out with sweatpants that were supposed to be back in winter or like whatever, or fall even. And I was just like, this isn't worth it to me. Um, And I feel like, cause I was putting the most money into it. I finally just hit my reaching point where I was like, I mean, you know, I was like a bad friend during that time. I was like, I was like, I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. I literally was like, Remy, I love you. But like, I like can't, I am like, just, I can't even function right now. Like okay. it was so bad. Um, So I had no, pro- I think I was the happiest out of everyone to be like, bye. <laughs> like, sorry, we're closed for now. Which like, I'm still never opposed to doing something similar, but if anything, I would sell it and like let someone have it and like have a stake in it or something. Because what we had was great. It was the fact that we could the never- pieces, every piece was incredible. Like I lost so much money every single month. And again, it's not about the money, but um, 
yeah i think and then the lawsuit at the end i was like fuck this shit yeah. i literally was like this is this is my sign. cherry on top cherry on time we ended up donating a lot all the rest of the clothes to a woman's shelter um and it's really cool because the shelter is helping um the ladies like learn how to sell. So they're selling the clothes That's and they're amazing. making the profits and it's Good. keeping them um, in, in the shelter and stuff. So it, like it made us really happy to like donate it all. And like knowing that like um, it's still getting like used and worn. And I guess a lot of the ladies too in the shelter um, are plus size and they were so excited. Like they sent us this most beautiful letter ever. And they're like, they're just so excited that they have cute clothes in their sizes. And I like started crying. I was like, this is, if everything was for this, the, that then it's worth it but like it it made it so much more um easier to let go of of just being like okay let's touch grass like what's important obviously everyone wants to make money but like like it's not worth your mental health it's not worth your the stress like and at least all this can now go because we still had like seventy thousand dollars worth of um clothes in boxes that we were like what do we do with this and it's like I was to the point, I was like, I'd rather just donate it. I was going to say, there, even, was there ever an option where you're like, let's just get rid of this? Well, we did just- a few sales to just like move the inventory. Uh-huh. Um, but by the very end, again, it costs money just to hold all the clothes in a fulfillment center and then shipping it out. Like every month we were paying. So the more we went on, we were just like, let's, this is just, I was like, I'd Cut rather donate it. I don't care about the money. Like I've already lost so much. What's another like, fuck, 17000 That's crazy. Um, that sounds crazy when you say it like that. Crazy. Um yeah, so I hated it. <laughs> I mean, I think you uh, you learned a lot. I did. You learned so much. And as much as people don't want to believe that what we do is it's a full-time job and it takes up a lot of time every week and it, it's just as many hours as a, a, a real full-time job, you were on top of that running a business for the first time ever. You got thrust into making all these big decisions. Oh my God. I mean, so many of these companies, influencer-owned companies, hire on people who have actually, you know, been to business school or have their MBA oh or my you know, God. know how to do these things. And so you took on a lot and I think you did a really great job and with we that. tried. With what, yeah, and you did a great mm-hmm. job. No, I did learn a lot. I think a lot of my um, learn to stop people pleasing came from that situation because finally I was like, look, I, I can't even care about hurting anyone's feelings. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, whether you have to fire people or like move fulfillment centers, et cetera, whatever. I was just like, we got to like, end this and the end of the day it's business oh my god yeah um so yeah well i love my square neck tanks and i'll be wearing them <laughs> till i die <laughs> anytime so, i wear something i'm like oh, parallel archival, archival. That's what i like to say now yeah. okay oh what's something from your childhood that gave you trauma for dating now oh, for dating this is so cliche and I feel like so many people relate to this but I've always struggled with the whole good enough thing and I know everyone does to a different way but I definitely feel like in when I was younger feeling like I had to be good enough I don't even know how to explain this oh not me not knowing you don't have to know also I can move on to a different question yeah maybe another one maybe okay. we can come back to that one cut to commercial break yeah cut to break <laughs> you're a worm with a mustache <laughs> Uh, one time we should have our podcast edited like a reality reunion oh be so funny. my like god dun, 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 we all dun, wear dun, different dun, dun. like costumes yeah, yeah, yeah jumping from chair to chair okay i might have just found my new tv obsession on prime have you guys heard about my lady jane it's inspired by the best-selling book the series is a history bending romanticy about lady jane gray Known as the Nine Days Queen, Jane was the queen of England for nine days and then beheaded, the ultimate damsel in distress. My Lady Jane tells her story the way it should have happened. You'll meet Jane, a know-it-all Tudor noblewoman with a sharp tongue and a warm heart. And then there's Guilford, an intriguing scoundrel with a dark secret. They have undeniable chemistry. Get ready to ship these star-crossed lovers in an epic tale of true love and high adventure set in an alt-universe of action, comedy, romance, and lust at first sight. Oh, and it's all set to a modern soundtrack. Watch My Lady Jane now on Prime Video. Wait, so I have a little story time. I recently had dinner with a friend and we haven't seen each other in years. Fun fact, we used to hang out a lot when I lived back in Orange County. So it's honestly been like a hot minute. And I was looking at her nails because she had these really pretty, they were like the exact blue you love (gasps) them. And maybe it was just because I desperately need to redo my nails because they're a little overgrown, but I was staring at her nails and I asked where she gets her nails done not only does she tell me that they're press on nails, Remy, I literally swear on my life. She goes, Alicia, like she looks at me so like, not annoyed, but confused. She's like, Alicia, hello. I listened to the pod. And I was like, what? She goes, they're impressed press on nails. <laughs> and I was like, 
I honestly was so shocked. I was like, oh my God. Of course they are. Are we surprised? I remember we were talking about how they have the glazed donut collection and they have like so many other colors in there too. There's like the cream ones. There's like chocolatey brown ones. There's so many different ones. And so many friends have told me that they tried the Impress Press on Nails and it has changed their life and their nails. Impress has so many options from regular French tip to fun designs. On the website, I've seen floral prints to cute strawberry designs on the nails. Like literally so many different types of, of designs and colors. And also the instant manicure kit includes 30 press on nails with pre-applied adhesive for a quick no mess application lasting up to seven days. You can literally do them in the car. Like it's not messy. You're not gonna spill glue everywhere. You're not gonna get your fingers stuck together because of the glue. I love how it doesn't require glue and it doesn't damage your natural nail, which is amazing. It truly is a getting ready game changer, whether you know you have like a a dance or a, sh a shoot or like, you know, whatever the case is, it comes with a prep pad, mini nail file and a manicure stick for a perfect at-home mani. It's the easiest and fastest way to upgrade your look. If I'm ever in a rush and I need to go to an event, but I don't have time to do my nails, using the Impress Press on Nails is my little cheat code and I can't rave about them enough. Visit impressbeauty.com slash basic and use code basic at checkout for 25% off Impress Manicure. That's I-M-P-R-E-S-S B-E-A-U-T-Y dot com forward slash B-A-S-I-C. Use code B-A-S-I-C for 25% off your entire order. Let's move on to the next one, which is why do you hide your dating life? <laughs> Honestly, it's funny because I think a lot of people, I think, okay, I think that's a huge misconception of me. I think a lot of people think I like purposely hide my dating life or like I'm purposely choosing to not put things out there, but well, I mean, and to an extent I am, but also like, I, I'm curious if you agree or not. I'll, okay. I'll ramble for a second. I think one of the big things is weirdly enough, that's one of the few areas in my life I've been able to keep private. So it's so nice actually having something that people can't just Google. Like it's so nice and refreshing. Um, I also feel like I, as a friend, I'm sure you've known this about me. Like if words mean a lot to me. So if I say something, it feels so final. So I feel like if I say a lot of things on the podcast about a situation, then I'm like, then I fully am not manifesting what's going to happen, but it makes it so final of like, like, I can't take that, but I can't be like, oh my God, ew, he's a piece of shit. And then be like, oh yeah, like we're back together. Like, obviously it's fun and entertainment, but in real life, I'm not even like that. So I feel like it, it gets hard when I'm like, I can only talk about something if it's like completely dead, like done. I think also you're just not boy crazy. Mm. Like you're not boy crazy. I have always been boy crazy. I have m more friends. I actually, I would say I have like a very equal amount of friends who are boy crazy or very much like you who like boys don't run your brain and your life and your thoughts 24 seven, which is so much healthier. <laughs> it's true. It's so much healthier. And like, I always, lonelier. <laughs> no, but I've always respected it. And I think that like, you do have a lot more respect for yourself than a lot of us who are constantly like seeking attention and approval from men have for ourselves. I've always said this. I'm like, I just feel like I seek my approval from work related things. And a lot of other people seek their worth through um, dating and love through dating mm -hmm. or, or male validation or whoever you're dating. Um, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I was the other way around. Like, uh, like and everyone's grass is greener on the other side, but I feel like obviously again, um, I think when you become a podcaster, people expect you to be like, and then I fucked this guy. And I'm like, dude, I love Tana. I love like, I love, even when Brooke came on and had such hilarious stories. I'm like, oh, I wish I had stories like this. Even Taryn, oh my God, she was over the other day. And she's like, of course there was, this would fucking happen to me. And, this, da, da. and I was just like, dude, shit happens to certain people. That shit never happens to me. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, maybe I need to like entertain like, so like sometimes like I'll like be talking to a guy online and I'm like, if I'm not really feeling it, I'm like, eh, whatever. But then I have friends who would entertain it just to literally be entertained. You're not a do it for the plot kind of girl. I want to be. Uh, but you don't, but like, and, uh, you, and you can be I know, if you want, but you don't need to be. But that's just not in my nature as much. And there's sometimes I'm like, Alicia, let loose, like, just like entertain it. It's okay. But then I'm always terrified of breaking someone's, feel like hurting someone's feelings. So I'm just like, I don't want to like lead them on, blah, 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 blah. And then, um, and then I overthink it to where it, before we have our first date, second date, before we have our second date, I've already pictured our whole life and why we got divorced. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to the last question. <laughs> What's something for your childhood that gave you trauma for dating now? Um, I think, I think I just don't trust anyone. I think, I think trust is 
has always been a really hard thing for me. I think the biggest thing with trust is like, I know no one, I know most people wouldn't intend for it, but like in my head, like you will hurt me and then my walls will go up. And, and that's relatable. Do you think something happened to have caused that? Or like, can you pinpoint anything? Mm. You also don't need to share that obviously if that's very personal. I think there's like actually multiple different things which like, I feel like all of it together doesn't seem like much, but like, I remember talking to my therapist and she was like, oh, well that makes sense. I was like, oh, makes sense for what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And she was just like, oh, well, don't you feel like, well, like whatever and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, that's really interesting. Um, I, I, I would say I'm still learning more about that. Okay. I think a big thing is to me, which I've gotten so much better, conflict equals fighting equals bad equals breakup. Like that to me is like, so being the people pleaser and Ashley's very similar, like confrontation to me means, oh my God, we're going to end our friendship. We're going to end our relationship. So I'd rather just like not say how I'm feeling to not disturb the peace, disrupt the peace, which that in return makes the breakup happen because you're not having communication. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a huge thing is like my parents, which love them to death. I know they're listening because they <laughs> listen to everything. <laughs> um, they... One thing about that, cause my mom's parents would fight all the time in front of her. And she said it was like so terrifying growing up. And so when she grew up, she was like, I never want my kids to see me and my husband fight. So Ash and I never really saw our parents fight ever. On top of it, we like weirdly, you know how like, again, your parents always mean for one thing and then the opposite reaction happens. Without realizing it, Ash and I like got older and we're like, wow, we've never seen healthy fighting because obviously it's important to talk through your problems we never even saw that as an example so then when it came to us in our personal like friendships or relationships we didn't know how to do it in a healthy way so we would just keep everything to ourselves. that's what my therapist told me and I was like oh yeah I was like that makes that sense I literally went I remember that day I went home to Ashley I was like Ashley <laughs> this is why we are the way we are and I'm sure so many people are like this but yeah. again like you, the intention was like oh I don't want you to feel unsafe in your home where your parents are like fighting and screaming but then it did the opposite reaction where we're like oh well I've also never seen someone in a healthy way work through like conflict mm -hmm. um so when it came to relationships or dating or friendships like to me I'm like oh I'm not gonna why would I voice my feelings or opinions? Because that, if I do that, it'll be bad. Like it'll be a negative thing. Yeah. Which obviously is not true. No, it's not true. Can I give you a little like hope core? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We've gotten so much better. I was going to say, you know how the same way that we will address a pain point within each other mm -hmm. and we're like, oh, it's not even a big deal because we know we're fine because mm -hmm. we know each other's intent and we know, uh, and then in the day, we just need to be able to put each other in our, in each other's shoes mm -hmm. and then we'll be fine. Like if that's all it is. Uh, when you find someone that is good for you and a healthy relationship, whether that's like your person or just a healthy relationship, you feel the same way. Totally. I think other than you though, Ashley's only been that person for me, but she's blood. So it's like, well, you're my sister. Like you're stuck with me forever. Yeah, no, when you, when you like start dating someone for real oh, though. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like if it's, when it's a healthy relationship, you will feel, and it's going to take like a work for sure, yeah. but you'll get to that point where you will have so much love or so much care for that person and so much trust built throughout time that when you, something comes up and you want to talk about it, you're, it's scary no matter what, but you're going to also think like, well, it's fine. Like we're going to, we're okay. Like yeah. we're going to be okay. And like, once you have that trust sort of build with that person, I think then you'll be able to put your walls down a little more. Yeah. It's just going to take time. We've gotten better. You've gotten so much better. Truly. Thanks to you. No, uh, but, <laughs> but like it's, it's the reason why we've gotten so much better is because I mean, it, time mm -hmm. and also because. But more practice with it too. Like practice, honestly, yeah. like Oh my God, the first few times, like if we'd ever sit down, even if it was something super small, pretty basic. And like, I wanted to voice something, I'd be like, like so anxious and like hyperventilating. Cause I'm like, oh my God, like, how do I say this? Like, like versus just being a people pleaser and being like going with the flow. But then time and time again, that happened to me where I just did that route. And then I had so much resentment towards the person. And then I feel like then I actually would distance myself. And then I felt like that was so always, always unfair to those, you know, people because then I'm like, well, now they don't even really know yeah. what now they probably have a better reason to like not want to be my friend or, or whatever the case is. But in my head, I'm like, this is the only way of survival. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's just time. I think time and, and working with your therapist sounds like it's been very good too. Yeah. I kind of need to hit her up. 
been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I think that sounds great though. Okay. Back to hiding your dating life. Uh-huh. In conclusion. Oh, um, <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, the real, the real answer is I barely even talk to my friends about my dating life, like let alone the internet, like, which it's, I feel like in some ways it's easier for the internet, but like if Rim and I are just hanging out, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, so then this happened and blah, blah, blah. Rim has to be like, so how's this person? Like what's new with this? Ashley's the exact same way. So clearly it's a way we got brought up or whatever. Probably like church shit too. I feel like. Perfect. I'll go back to this question. (laughs) Yes. Probably church shit too. In the sense of like, I don't know, leave room for Jesus can like scar you dude I know you did your TikTok where you were talking about just certain things you know that you've been dealing with personally and I remember oh, things I'm embarrassed to admit yes and yes. I, I know you've uh, expressed on the pod before kind of your struggles with being raised in the church mm-hmm. and your beliefs and where are you standing right now with how you feel honestly my biggest thing with that is I feel I feel like I know what I personally believe, but I also would never want to be someone, like I'm never going to diminish someone else's personal experience of what they've been through. And there's so much about the church that I like gag at in the sense of at least what I grew up with, like that I'm just like, that is so not what I believe. And I think that even just the word church, like that can be so different to every single person. And like someone's experience could have been literally horrific and the most actual like, like disgusting thing ever could happen to them and like I'm never gonna be like oh well god like I just I hate I hate those people I hate sorry sorry if you are one of those people I just hate those people who are like well like god didn't hurt you the church did and I'm like well okay but either way like their experience was fucking tainted and like it's just like I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know but I feel like it's because I grew up with like very hypocritical um people who like went to my different churches or like where how you know I just feel like I again as a very observant kid I feel like I was like that's fucked, that's fucked, that's fucked. Then you get older and then you're finally like, quote, in the real world, the secular world as the religious people would call it. (laughs) It's so crazy to me that like some of the people I'm thinking of who I grew up with and they're like, they were adults then. Like the fact that they would think I'm going to hell for living the way I do now, which is just so crazy because I'm like, I'm like, was I in a fucking cult? Like, I know I wasn't, but like in my head, I'm like, dude, it was so strict and crazy. And it was like such a small little like community of like so much judgment and shit that I'm like, I don't believe in that, but I do believe in a God and I believe in God. And I, I, that's all I can. And, but I remember back in the day, like if a celebrity, um, was like, oh, I love God or something like that. Like I would always hear like, oh, well, they're not, they're not Christian enough or they're like, they only like, they want to like live in their sinful world. And I'm like, Ugh, like, I hate that shit. Also for context, like you grew up like very much with like in the church. Like oh I my feel God. like, like well, my I mom was with, always a worship leader. Yes, like we were there Christian multiple schools. times a week, Christian school, the amount of yeah. shit I've memorized that like couldn't tell you like, but then it's hard too. Cause then I feel like I'm doing a disservice. I was like, obviously if I believe what I believe, I should be proud to share that. But I think I'm in that weird in between of like, I, I don't know, I'm not there yet to where I want to be like. You also don't need to be a worship leader. Like you don't need to no, scream it from the rooftop. But even like, but if something's important to you, you know what I mean? Like you like tell people, I don't know. So I feel like I'm just in that like. I think it could be know. just as important to you and you could keep it for yourself though. I really do. Yeah. And I think that every day you're working on that relationship and that's all that matters. That's a personal relationship that you don't need to share with anybody. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. I feel like a very normal or a very like average relationship with the church is like going on the weekends and like, you know, and that you say your prayers at night and that's probably it. But like, I've never met anybody that was as deep in the church as you were. So it's, it's a very interesting relationship to watch. And I'm sure because you were so in it, it's a lot more to break down. Yeah. 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 That's what I just observed. Okay. So give yourself grace because that is hard. It's hard for anybody. And speaking of grace. On the grace of God. (laughs) In grace, how how sweet the the sound. Oh, okay. (laughs) When slash at what moment did you know to go on Zoloft? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it there and I'll ask for part two after. Um, it was a lovely 2020, and it had been a few months of me talking to my therapist over Zoom, and it was another. I was like waiting for her to be like suggest it like hey maybe you should look into it but she never gave me that so then finally I was like yeah something's more like I don't know like medication or something but it scares me I don't know if I want to do it and she was like well you could always like do you think you could go another month like and check in in a month and I just remember being like I don't think I can make it a month like literally I was like we better start that now like what (laughs) 
in what regards like make it a month it's been so hard just to get day to day like the thought of a month was like like at that point i was just trying to make it through each day and then the thought of a month i was like i don't think i can like that's not even an option like mm -hmm. let's figure this out so yeah she connected me to a psychiatrist and then she said the same thing so i was like it kind of scares me she's like well we can like check it in a month and i was like i don't think we can do that <laughs> but it was fine but it was fine i mean you've changed in so many beautiful ways after being medicated and getting diagnoses, which I'm sure was so validating to hear. I know also we're celebrating because more recently we did lower our dose. We did. I don't think I've talked about it publicly, like honestly, unless I did in the last episode and I forgot. Cause I don't mm, think you did. Okay. I don't think you did. Yeah. Um, back in February or the past year, I've been wanting to slowly get off of my medication, which I know sounds like an oxymoron. Um, but it can like one, no one knows long-term like, you know, anything about it long-term. Um, what the doctors will say is like, well, there's no studies yet. And I'm like, cool. But they said that about cigarettes. So I don't know what you want from me. Um, so I, I've been ideally wanting to eventually get off of it. Cause even when I started, they were like, well, you can go on for six months and come off. Like you can just use it as like a, t it's a tool. It's not a magic pill. It's not a band aid That's just going to fix everything. It's, it's a tool to help you. And then, um, you can decide later if, you know, some people end up staying on it for life. Um, that was something I knew from the beginning. I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, but, and it was really scary because I feel like a few years ago when I needed to up my dose after I had a breakdown on this couch, well, the old couch, um, <laughs> rip, rip. I think they're in storage, yeah, it's just right? Somewhere in storage. <laughs> um, I remember I was on a hundred milligrams of Zoloft and my whole fear was like, and then I ended up upping it to 150. And my biggest fear is like, okay, so what? In another two years, I'm gonna have to go to 170 and just like keep upping it until it doesn't, I'm like used to it. And then finally this, I had been doing good, but of course, anytime you're feeling good, you're like, why would I disrupt the piece now? Like if I'm good, we should keep it this way. Yeah. But it was um, top of this year. And I remember thinking like, oh, I really do wanna eventually slowly get off of it, but it's not a good time because, um, you know, we're starting the new podcast and like, you know, like that's, been, you know, that's going to be ramping up. And then after that is, um, yeah, my birthday or I don't know, whatever. There was just always something. And then there's a work trip and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, in my head, I was like, I need like two months to be like completely depressed, uh, like afterwards, you know? But then finally I was like, Alicia, there's never going to be a good enough time. Like there's always going to be something, especially with this line of work. Like there's always something, there's always going to be a new project. So I was like, just go down like 25 milligrams like just because that's the way I went up like very very small I was like let's just go down very slow I felt n nothing no side effects and I've heard horrendous side effects can happen so I was like oh my god I had no side effects it was like February or March and then April May and then in May right before our trip I went down another 25 milligrams so now I'm back to 100 milligrams and that's the same exact dosage I was on when I was sitting here crying my eyes out and that was such a like and I've had no side effects and it's been so fucking good um and it just is like so I'm like, thank God, because I feel like I've only heard people being like, and then I had to up it and then I got dependent on it. And then obviously I'm putting serotonin in my body. Like my body has naturally stopped making its own serotonin because it's used to getting the serotonin from my meds. Wow. So like you have to like slowly re-let your body learn to like Could redo you die it. if you just like stop it? Like I know you, turkey? you get like insane side effects. Wow. Like, and that's why, so this is where a lot, my heart goes with so many like drug addicts because like it's so expensive to just like, I have the luxury at any time, even if I fly to New York and forget my medication, I can just go to a pharmacy and buy out of pocket. I can be like, oh shit, I forgot it. Let me go buy it. Like some people don't have hundreds of dollars to just buy their medication. And then on top of it, like people are like out there rationing or like they have like a- And you have health insurance. And I have health too. insurance. Yeah. So it's like, like, I just, my heart breaks when I see like homeless people who are like very like mentally unwell because I'm like, dude, like they should be having meds, but they don't have it. Like. And like the way my brain was like fucking what felt like demonic for a second. And that sounds weird after the whole church thing, but like, like the way that like your brain can just be so evil to you. And then just to not have those tools, like my heart breaks for people when I see like mental health issues, especially homeless people. Cause I'm just like, oh, I'm like, dude, like they have no access to this or people who can't afford it. And then they're like, yeah, I really need my meds, but I can't fucking afford it. I'm obviously going to pay my rent over this. And like, yeah. it just, it literally breaks my heart. So I definitely want to find a way to like somehow get involved in that. Wow. Full tangent, but I have had zero side effects because I've been able to like slowly taper. So I'll probably stay out a hundred for another few months and then try to go down to 75 and then try to eventually go to zero. I love that. I know. I'm excited. That's amazing. I'm excited. And, if it, and if I stay at 50 for a while, then that's okay. But I was like, you know what? It took me four years to get here. Let's take another like 
few years to get off of it. For like, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wean yourself off slowly. Work with your doctor. Mm-hmm. We're very excited we are about very that. very health focused, doctor yes. focused here. Yes, love that. <laughs> Okay, we all know I love being comfortable. It's as soon as I get home, all my clothes are ripped off and I'm immediately in pajamas or comfy clothes. And if you guys have not tried the Skim Soft Lounge anything, you are absolutely missing out. It is my favorite, favorite, favorite line that they have at Skims. I actually bought the foldover pants forever ago and then I got them tailored and the tailor actually messed them up. Wait, really? And then they weren't, they weren't selling them for a while. So I'm not kidding. I'd go on the Skims website every month and refresh and Notify refresh when and refresh. <laughs> no, actually like I am obsessed with them. They're the most comfortable pants in the world. And I, because I didn't have them anymore and I couldn't wear them. I've never wanted to wear a pants, pair of pants more it's in like my when life. You can't have it. You want it more. I'll just say you guys, they are back. And if you're listening to this right now, go on skims and get the fold over pants. And then you can also get the matching tank top. So it's a cute matching set. You can wear them as pajamas. You can wear them out and about as like cute loungewear. You need to try them. Also, uh, I know Alicia, you love the long slip dress. I know I'm not the only one, but I just feel like I've, I still have like big t-shirts from when I was in middle school that Mm -hmm. I'll just like wear. And sometimes I'm like, Alicia, you're 30, get rid of them and get cute lounge clothes. You can get matching sets and look cute while still being comfy. It's not so comfy. Yeah. Yes. Like one day you're going to come over. I'm going to be watching my reality TV and I'm going to be in my long slip dress. And that's fine. Cause I'll be wearing my pants, my tank top. You literally can't go wrong. Shop the Skims Soft Lounge Collection at skims.com, now available in sizes extra extra small to 4X. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows. We've had some deep ones. Mm-hmm. We're going to skip around, do a little fun one, because I know you have a really fun story that you'd like to share with the class. Why did you stop talking to the last guy you were talking to? <laughs> Which one? I mean, I think you should talk about the inaccessibility on certain social media platforms, <gasps> right? Oh my God. Oh my that God. That doesn't go, like it's not the last guy, but I do think no, you no, needed no. to this share with the a, class. This is a, th- I have a better story. Literally the other day, this is the new my new story, which I could have, see like, I feel like I have stories, but they're not even that, ex- to me I'm like, this is boring, but whatever. Okay, so a crazy jet lag, right? I can't sleep. It's like a lovely 2 a.m. It feels like 10 a.m. to me. I'm like, la di da di da So I'm just sitting, and I love how you said I like my brain doesn't think about boys because it does a lot, actually. Um, I just don't like verbalize it. I just wow. like- Wow, <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm yeah. not actually no, no, shocking. No, it, it's, it's there. I'm just like, hmm, la di da di da And then I was like, oh, I wonder what ever happened to that one guy who was really hot. I knew at one point he, you know, we kind of stopped talking. Um, we did go on like a couple dates. We kind of stopped talking for a little bit. And then I remember he like, he like was playing professional, um, like soccer or something for, um, a different country, like, or something. I was like, Oh wait, athlete. Okay. Love this athletic. So I was like, okay, wait, this is crazy. Like congrats. Like that's the last thing I'd said to him. And then the other night it was, I couldn't sleep. So I was like, mm, let me, um, let me do some stalking. Cause I wonder, mm-hmm. I wonder what's up, you know? Maybe he like won. Well, I was is thinking, he winning? I was thinking, is I was like, that was a war? while ago. I wonder how it's going. Like I wonder, I haven't heard from him, which makes sense because he's literally a professional athlete now uh, in a different country. Nude football. In nude football. <laughs> Go watch Basically Unfiltered for that. Um, inside joke. Um, so I'm sitting there. And I'm like, okay, like, well, just stalk him. You're wide fucking awake. Like, who cares? I'm like, okay. So I go on Instagram. I'm like, la di da di da di da. Shoot, I like can't find his Instagram. I was like, okay, let me. I'm like, no, th- I'm pretty sure this was it because. That's his name. It's a very simple name to search. You know, it's not like a misspelling. It's not like underscore XOXO moment. Um, Very simple, simple name. There's only one way to spell that name, you Uh know? Uh Uh-huh. So I'm like, okay, let me go to like my friend who is a mutual friend with him because I know, you know, she's following him. And then I was like, I, 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 did I mute him at one point? I might've muted him. And then I was like, well, if you mute someone, is it hard to find them again? I was like, I don't know. So then I go to her page and I'm like, oh, I think he deleted his Instagram because <laughs> she's not following him either. And I was like, oh. oh my God, he deleted his Instagram. I was like, I mean, he didn't post that often anyway. So it wasn't unfathomable. But I was like, I remember him talking to me because he had paid to like get his um, handle from someone. Okay. So in my head, I was like, that's so weird to pay someone for a handle and then and to then delete, delete it. Your You're Instagram. so right. And then I'm like, let me look on TikTok because I remember he like had a TikTok. So I'm looking at the TikTok, I can't fucking find it. And I'm like, <gasps> okay. And then it hits me. Like the school bus hitting Regina George. 
I think he blocked me. On multiple platforms? On multiple platforms. <gasps> and I go. I didn't know it was multiple platforms. I go. <gasps> Is this? Did I get blocked? I get, I, I'm like, there's no fucking way he blocked me. Then I go to just Safari, you know, the internet. I'm like, I type in his Instagram. Boom. Comes up because oh. I'm not logged in. And it says posted a week ago. I go, <gasps> he blocked me. I have no idea why. What? I was going to say, what warrants a block? I have no idea why. <gasps> I truly have no idea why. I have a few ideas why, but, <laughs> I, have, but I have no idea we why. We have no idea. Yeah. And then it hits me. I was like, <gasps> did you block him back? Oh, you can't no, even block him back. No, because I can't back. even fucking <gasps> look. I know. You should have blocked first. I was rooting for your team. Not anymore. Not anymore. Mm. Here's my theory. I did at one point on the podcast, kind of after we stopped talking a little bit, say a story that did involve him. Mm. So I'm like, either he is so in love with me and he saw that and got heartbroken. Okay. And here's the thing. Yes, my humor is very conceited. Okay. Maybe he's in a new relationship. That's a thought. Maybe. But also like, if you blocked me, you're still in love with me. Maybe the <laughs> ex-girlfriend or the new girlfriend is like, he's still in love with her mm -hmm. and- I can't have accessibility. Mm -hmm. Like he can't see her. So like, I, why she are took you following her? Yeah. Why are you following her? Mm -hmm. She's clearly like amazing. Yeah. And clearly she's the one that got away. It could quite possibly be that. And that's what I, th that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Um, am I right? I don't know. Should but we do I some investigating? Should we do some investigative journalism? Okay, I've, I've always wanted to hire a PI for like any reason. That one, I don't think not warrants him, a not, PI. Okay, ew, okay. Ew, I'm not spending my money on that. Okay. Ew. <laughs> what I'm thinking is like, I've always wanted to. So if I ever have a reason to, even like a one degree away, like even if you, even if Shane needed me to do, like to find someone, like I, I would love to do that. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Yeah, don't worry. I have not done one on Cal. Oh, honestly? Wouldn't have been that mad. It, it could be a in great beginning. It could be a great wedding gift. I'm curious for the bachelor <laughs> like, party. Hey, you passed the test, my dude. <laughs> Finally, you're like, come here, hug me, brother. Hug me, brother. <laughs> well, that's a good tea. Um, I actually forgot what the question was. My ego. Oh, that was. Uh, you so you stopped talking to the, that was the last. Was that the last guy? Um, he was. He was. He was. That was just the, uh, something that happened last week okay. that I thought was very interesting. Okay, yeah, I find it interesting for Me sure. Me too. For sure. What did I do? Don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. Okay, why do you think it's so hard to open up to people? I think they just don't get my humor, and because of that. I hold back on my humor. Okay. Like me just saying how fucking amazing I am. I'm like, haha, that's so funny because if you ever lived in my body for a few days, especially in middle school or high school, there's no way that would have come out of my mouth. I agree. Like, it's, yes. tra it's, tra it's a trauma response, but it's funny. It, ha ha. It laugh. is funny, but I also understand how maybe to like a new person you saying that. Like, because now I'm just so pretty. Well, because you're so beautiful <laughs> and like they're so intimidated. Yeah. And they're like, but you know, because everyone, Beauty and brains. everyone loves someone who's like, they're hot, but they don't know it. Exactly. But you can't like walk up and be like, I know I'm hot. Well, see, here's the thing. Here's my, here's my real issue. When I have no makeup, my jokes land. <laughs> When I have makeup, <laughs> people don't, they look at me like I'm fucking conceited. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's not my fault. I look it's drastic. It's not my fault that I'm hot. No, it's <laughs> not my fault. I look drastically different with and without makeup. Okay. I will <laughs> say it is, I think it could be a little jarring to a new person if you walk up and you're like, I get it, I'm oh. hot. Uh, regardless, <laughs> I think it's a little jarring. So that's why I loved when we had Dixie on, she, I was like, I fucking get you now, bitch. We have the same humor. Cause she'd be like, I'm just like she amazing. Would, yeah, that and I was, was like, really funny. I was like, oh, you get it. And I get it because I don't actually think, I mean, to an extent a little bit, but not enough to where like, I actually walk around and think that. Just mis she's misunderstood. Exactly. It's hilarious. Um, is that the real reason why you don't open up to people? I think that's, that's like a third of the reason is sometimes I'm like, my jokes aren't gonna land. Um, I've gotten way better at laughing at myself. Like there's been a few times I've been in a group of people and I like, I said a joke didn't land. Ronish was perfect. The prime example. Great. Um, prime example of like, haha, this is funny. You can laugh at me. Yeah. But people are like, can we laugh? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, no, like it's, la it's hilarious. You can ha -ha. laugh at me. Yeah. Um, even, I mean, obviously by the time this is out, you would hear the time that I went to the hospital, <laughs> um, after a concert because I drank too much and it was our first team bonding with, uh, Zane and Heath. And, um, luckily you and Zane knew that I would want I would want, once you knew I was fine, I would want um, some photos to remember the night yeah. 
of me on a stretcher. Yeah. Um, I was totally fine. So when we filmed the next episode where we talked about it on basically unfiltered, go follow. Um, I literally, before we record, I go, guys, you can read me to filth. Like, it's okay. Like, please feel like it's, it is so fine for you to make fun of me. I'm giving you permission because sometimes like, like I find that so funny, but I get, I get, especially new people. If you're not like that close to like understand, um, I get it. I think you would have been mad at me had you come to and been like, did you get a photo on me being like, no. I would have been like, damn, really? Not yeah, even one. I know you. I know. <laughs> and I waited until you were, um, yeah. where some people might be very, of, some people might be offended by that, you know, like why the fuck would you take photos at blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Which is so funny. Cause anytime I see a f- comment like that, whether it's about me or you, like, why don't you be a good friend and like hold her hair back or like whatever the case is, I just die laughing. Cause I'm like, no, like the way I would be up more upset if you didn't get my body going into an ambulance. I know, <laughs> and I knew that. And I waited until a an appropriate time. Exactly, because you know how to read a If there was room. an appropriate time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, honestly, I wasn't taking content. And then once I saw you lifted in the ambulance, I was like, she is going to want that. One. And like, I'm in good hands. It's not like you're like, hold on, let me leave you on the ground to take a photo. Oh, trust me, <laughs> when you were on the floor of the bathroom, I was like, she doesn't, she's not going to want this nope. one. And I'm she's so glad you didn't. That. Ambulance, she's gonna want that yep. one. Um, go watch that story or mm-hmm. the Instagram. Ooh, or the have you ever felt like you're a perfectionist because you're hiding something deep down? Oh my god, who the fuck? Asked okay, that? read. I mean, I feel like I used to, but I feel like um, when I was my most perfectionist self and like very OCD, it was more of people thinking I was boring if I wasn't like a certain way. Um, and then I just got too tired to keep that up. So it went away. Like school, Isha. Yeah. Like, um, I would make sure every video was fucking perfect. Like I would rewatch it 20 times. Like I put all my, all of my all into every video and some people would be like, wow, you have a great work worth work ethic. And I'm like, no, I am just literally like OCD over here. And I'm like, <laughs> like, it like bothers me if it's not perfect. Um, but I think a lot of that perfectionism came from feeling like, well, if it's not the perfect edit, then it's not gonna be funny enough. And then people are gonna think I'm boring or then people are gonna think, like I never would have just sat and done like a sit talking video, which LOL, because that's literally all that podcasts are now. Um, Yeah, so I think think before it would have been like, oh, I need to hide behind this perfectionism so people don't think I'm boring. I don't know if that makes sense. How are you feeling right now? Because I know that's a really big, I don't wanna say fear, but just uh, something always in the back of your mind of the idea of being boring. How are you feeling about that? Oh my God, honestly, it's so funny because that's one thing like going into the internet, I'm like, oh, I didn't know I had that insecurity until I like found out I had that insecurity. But again, I think a lot of it comes from comparing where I compare myself to other people who are like crazy and doing crazy things. I'm like, we are such different personalities. I've said this before, but I did the Myers-Briggs personality test. Of course, I'm the fucking rarest one. INFJ, introvert something wait i'm an enfj my mom's an enfj is that the protagonist um i'm the advocate <gasps> enfj oh my god that's, that's my mom so crazy so you're an extrovert i'm an introvert yeah and but everything else is the same i forget what the n is let me look up protagonist is usually like the main character main character let's okay see. main character energy main character energy infj you're the advocate you're quiet mystical and the idealist literally the rarest one um, let me see. Let me see. I'm an enigma. <laughs> okay. So you're I introvert mm-hmm. and intuitives. You prefer to focus on possibilities and the big picture. And intuitive with people, like reading people. Ah. That's why we both have an N. <gasps> okay. F is the feelers tend to be sensitive and cooperative and decide based on their own personal values and how others will be affected by their actions. And then J are the judgers. Which is, I okay, so I, I've been all over this side of YouTube because it, it's like everything about the INFJ, blah, 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 blah. And it said, it it you which you would feel this way too, our feelings for F and judging can feel um, very competing at times because we feel like a bad person for not caring about people's feelings if we're judging. But- judging is what gives us really good intuition because we're judging. Oh, they all situ- go hand in hand. Yes, but they also kind of, it's like an inner battle between us of like, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, but also like, oh, but my gut is telling me this about them. I see. So it, it's I like see. an internal conflict, which I thought was really interesting. We would be twins. We would be. That's we would so be. Cute. I think Mike Sheffer is also an ENFJ. Okay. Slay. I remember him saying, uh, maybe, Slay maybe, Mike maybe, Sheffer. Maybe. Me messages him. He's like, no. We're like an ENFJ. <laughs> um, yeah, rarest types. Okay, Go so us. right now, because I know you and I had a good deep conversation about it in Asia. We've talked about this a lot, but your your big fear or your um, a biggest insecurity within all of this was always feeling boring. 
Mm -hmm. And I know that you felt that throughout the years. And how are we feeling about that like right now in this moment? I think right now what happened after turning 30 was realizing like this is bitch this is how you are like you can't change it like I'm already a butterfly but I can't change I'm mean, it's not like I'm like it, it, I've always been this way I'm you've always already, gonna you've be already this way. metamorphosized I've already metamorphosized as Hillary Duff said yes. um and like this is just how you're gonna be so like learn to love the more private parts of you learn to love that you know you are an observer or things that I used to hate about myself I'm like you know what like I don't know. And also just realizing like that was just me projecting of like me feeling like I was boring. Like, or if I ever saw someone else and thought they were boring, I was like, well, Alicia, you think that about yourself. So why are you thinking that about them? Or like, whatever, bitch, my brain, uh, like the, the TikTok that was like, you think you can hurt me. And I'm like, no, literally, I think a lot of people are so confused how like we've stayed PG. Like I say PG. I feel like we're actually not when you really listen to our shit. Like people are like, you've, you've never been canceled or you've never like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it's because I have to deal with my own brain. I don't have time to even look at other people's tweets about me. <laughs> like I actually don't have the, the Jesus take the wheel. Like I truly don't, I don't, I can't, I can't because I'm just dealing with myself, which like pros and cons, obviously. Um, but we've gotten better at it. We've gotten way better. I just, and I say this every time, I don't understand how you could think that you're boring. And I don't understand how you not in a mean way, obviously, but just like you wanting to keep things more private or you, I don't know, like that, that's not boring. I don't know how you could ever think you that's know why? boring. It's because it's not like, you know what? I'm going to choose to keep this private. It's more of a, like, I struggle so much to open up. I struggle so much to just like talk freely and not think of consequences or like think how this is going to be interpreted or whatever. So it feels like I'm not able to. So then it feels like, oh, well, since I'm not able to, it's not my choice that I'm not as extroverted. Like I'm just an I and you're an E. Boring is just a bad word for it I know, but it it has a negative connotation where like obviously being reserved isn't boring, but I've- I would say reserved. I've internalized that, Mm -hmm. which like, obviously I feel like growing up, I was always very, 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 very shy. So I feel like it's that part of me being like, is that my true self versus realizing, no, I've just grown and I've I've just grown. Like now I- I don't know. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Also, like, I think one thing that you struggle with is you, you struggle with change. Mm -hmm. And I think you really struggle with letting things go. Mm -hmm. And so I think let go of the word boring because you're not who you used to be. And I think reserved is a much better word for it now. And I think you need to let that go because I feel like that's just a really mean word to use for yourself. Oh, for sure. I think that you should use reserved or private. Like, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with privacy. There's nothing wrong with being reserved. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, you were a lot more closed off and a lot, I don't want to say boring, boring, but you were definitely uh, what what some might de- <laughs> define boring in the back in the day. And that's totally fine, but you don't need to hold on to that anymore. I don't think you're boring at all. Thank you. Duh. And it's true. Thank you. Okay. okay. What's one thing you wish you could change about yourself? Not from love. Oh, that I wouldn't be boring. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, We're removing that from the dictionary. Truly, by the way. truly, just me overthinking my brain. Like the days that I don't overthink, and usually those comes when I'm really. Those days usually come when I'm extremely tired, um, which I'm sure even the viewers can probably realize a difference when I'm like on like when I've slept good <laughs> for like an episode or something. Um, but when I'm in my head and overthink everything, I just like it's oh my god, I can't, I physically can't. So I wish. I'm so envious of people who just like speak what they think. And I would like at that point, I wish I was fucking canceled for something that I didn't mean versus like keeping it all to myself because it can't come out of my mouth. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't like articulate. Yeah. It I'm like, I hate yeah. how much I can't articulate, but if we're doing something like not as like negative about me, I honestly, another thing I wish is that goes in hand in hand of just being like more quick witted. Like I love when I am, but it just comes out naturally. And obviously that's not something you can force. But again, when I'm so in my head, I feel like I'm just not like quick witted. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I can be. And I think that's probably why I struggle with feeling like, I think I just have so many different sides to me. Cause like, if you're one of my close friends, you would never say I'm boring. You would never say I'm um quiet. Like you would yeah. never, like I'm so outgoing. So I feel like it feels polar opposite to me because then I'm in a group of people and I'm very shy and reserved, quiet and reserved. Thank you. Um, and so I think to me, it feels like, not two faced. Oh my God. But to me, I see such a like black and white stark difference between the different Alicia's (laughs) that it can feel very like 
oh, like that Alicia's fun or like, oh, this Alicia feels like, why can't, why is she struggling to say something? That's why I've always been so big on vibes with people. Like I can, it doesn't matter how long I've known someone. I can just meet someone fucking vibe with them and be myself versus there's other people I've known for years where like anytime they're around, I just like, I, I don't click with them. And you're, I, I think there's like a normal level of that with people, but then there's like the Alicia level of that. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? The more I've learned about ADHD, the more I've learned, like, like you're just more sensitive to like things. And like, I think it's just vibes, like, like um, energy. Variables like, in the room or yeah, very, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I think that's why in the past I've usually grown to, or like, you know, op- opposites attract. Like I, like I've tend to like lean towards outgoing people because I'm like, oh, they appreciate my quietness. Oh my God. Haley Ringo fucking love her. She'll always say she's like, Ashley is like, um, one of our really good friends who's close with Ashley. She's like such an outgoing person, like so outgoing all over the place. She's like, Oh, like anytime I'm around Ashley, she just feels so safe because like, she's so like put together. Then, and then it's funny. Cause I know Ashley and I'm like, LOL. Cause I know she's trying to like, why can't I be like Haley? Who's Aww. just like more like this, but it's just funny finding someone who like appreciates, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Peanut butter in my jelly. I think you're perfect the way you are. So you agree I'm perfect. I already told you earlier. I told you you're perfect. <laughs> and I said, block that guy. What's something you've been improving on in your life? Oof. That was probably not the best time to ask. Um, <laughs> little, like, it could be a little thing. Um, skincare? Oh, my skincare. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I have been very into my skincare routine. Mm-hmm. Even black I will drunk. triple cleanse <laughs> the makeup off my face and then do my skincare routine. Um, I've had way less oil today. Can you tell? I tried to hey, blot. You look, you look great. I couldn't blot. Hey, you, I already, it look, you look gorgeous. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Um, I think just being easier on myself, honestly, I feel like I've low key been like a piece of shit and just like sitting on the couch watching so much reality TV lately, but like, that's so unheard of for me. And I've just been like, well, I guess I just need to rest. Like I haven't even walked like literally yesterday. I was like, I need to see the sun. Like I need to move my body. Um, because I just like, sit all day and like here I am sitting again all day but like I'm at quote work so it's a little different (laughs) but um yeah I'm like I need to like move my body and work out like I literally need to do something like that but in my head I'm like well I'm being easier on myself because maybe I just am tired I've been saying that for like four months (laughs) you know it ebbs and flows it ebbs and flows it's summertime the sun's out we'll get out there eventually we We will. will and we will okay I'm gonna end on a fun question okay who's one influencer or celebrity that you would shoot your shot with (gasps) Oh my God. Ooh. I've always, I mean, I, I've always said, I love, um, Adam Devine. Devine. Shoot your shot with, they can't be married with kids. Oh, fuck, ma'am. Right. The only person that can come to my head right now is, um, this guy named Rob from Love Island. <laughs> but he was a piece of shit to his girl. Oh, I'm watching the finale soon. Well, not the finale. The next episode's out tonight. I'm going to watch it. Okay. He's really hot though. Oh my God. Well, the next part was send them a DM during the episode, but is he with someone? Oh, we don't know, right? I don't know. Okay, then pick someone else who's single. Ooh, wait, I love this game. <laughs> who should it be? Who do you, wait, what influencer or celebrity would you like to shoot your shot with? <gasps> Tyler Cameron. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hell no. We fucked, we pulverized that one. We ran that shit into <laughs> the ground. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh my God. That's funny. You should DM Zane. Th- that's going to be the top comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should just do, hey. <laughs> hi. <laughs> He's like, hey, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Slide into the DMs and just say hi. Hey. Do it. Winky face. Wait, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Please do it. <gasps> Glenn Powell. He's single? I guess so. Message him. What I should think I he's say? single. Just say, hey. <gasps> say, hey, loved the new movie. <laughs> hey, what's I know something thing, you can hit, man. <laughs> man. Is that, it's called a hit man? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, he's so cute. Would I love him? He seems so nice too. Yeah, love this. Glenn Powell. Is that who is your hitman? I know something you hitman. That's fucking funny. <gasps> oh, we were actually sending it. I didn't know we were actually sending that. <laughs> you can't tell me to send it and then I not was send it. Kidding. I was just, I would just lead with them. Hey, winky face. Or hey, smile. That's fucking funny because it's it's never gonna happen, so it's funny. Don't manifest that. He's moving to Texas. We do love a cow a ro- a rodeo. <laughs> I know something you can hit. Man. Man. All right. You saw it here first, guys. Next week, we will report back with any results. Okay, perfect. He might see it. Did you message Zane as well? No, but I can. Say, hey, winky face. He's literally going to be like, yeah. So do it. My favorite's when you go to like DM your friend, but it's this business chat because your thing's <laughs> your, your a business account. Hello, circling back. Hi, circling, circling back. back. Per my last email. Hi, per my last email. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, 
thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh my God. No, literally anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you guys haven't already, you can follow me at, at Alicia on Instagram. Yes. Um, Alicia Marie vlogs, Alicia yep. Marie YouTube. Yep. Um, I did upload a haul of everything I got from Asia. I did watch it. It was spectacular. There were oh, lots of purses. I actually forgot. I forgot. What? My sunny angels? No, oh. I ordered you a new purse and I was going to give it to you on the podcast Shut to say thank you up. for such an amazing trip. No, and I was trying to fill it with the Japanese drinks, Stop. but we couldn't find the drinks and the purse is coming from Korea. So it's going to be a while. But I forgot <laughs> till right now. We always love to give our guests a gift, a party You're so gift. Right. Yes. Can I have another pretty basic palette? I think there's some back there I saw. Um, yeah, they're so expired, but... <laughs> Feel no, free. no, they're not open, so they're not expired. D does it not start till you open it? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. It can just sit there for years? Mm -hmm. See? <laughs> you guys were selling pretty basic. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, thank you for opening up. No, I, I mean, literally any time. <laughs> I mean, you guys, if you want more, Alicia, let us know what you want from her. She'll give it to you. Yeah. We'll report back uh, next week with a- uh, Hopefully I go on a date with Glenn Powell. Let's all put it up. Everyone comment, Alicia goes on a date with Glenn Powell. I would literally love, I love him. He's so <laughs> cute. He's like a real movie star, you know? Well, one time we were at a party. Mm -hmm. You weren't there. Okay. One time I was at a party and he was there. <gasps> and it was a- hi? No, because, well, he was with his ex at the time. Um, oh. And I was like, what? But it was a, through a mutual friend of a mutual friend who they were at. Anyway, someone knew the birthday boy too, who I had just recently become friends with. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? And I just watched Top Gun. And I was like, wait, I can't look. Pl good plan. We go to the Allo Gym every day. Does he go to the Allo Gym? Yes, he does Pilates with Octopus Lover. <gasps> and Brooke Schofield. Wait, wait. Wait. Brooke will hook it up. I feel like Brooke's, I feel like he and Brooke would look really good together. I think you and him would look really good together. Oh my God, thank you so much. Um, two people who are not boring at all. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>